Um, I guess I'd like to uh, call the uh, public session back into order. We just completed an executive session. Uh, but with that, if we could all rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, we are missing uh, one board member this evening. Mr. Stock is not in attendance. Uh, do we have any announcements before we get into the agenda? I have a few announcements. Okay. General, um, Clarence sent four teams to Destination Imagination this year, Global Finals. Um, the middle school team finished 27th out of 90 teams global, globally, which is a very high rank. Fantastic. Um, I also got to attend the Clarence Center Color Run. I'll tell you, it was an awesome event. I got to throw, throw some color in. The kids had a good time. They raised a lot of money. And I went on the fifth grade camping trip at Clarence Center Elementary, the 36 year tradition. And the teachers did an amazing job. And the students had a great time. Great. Thank you for sharing. Anyone else? Okay. All right. Um, as I noted, we uh, had a prior meeting executive session. Um, item number three can I get approval for the agenda for this evening? Make a motion. Do I have a second? second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Carried. Next item of business is approval of the minutes from our Board of Ed <coughs> meeting uh, and executive session on May 7th, as well as a special uh, Board of Ed executive session that occurred on May 15th. If everybody's okay with that, I need a motion for approval. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Carried. All right. Uh, brings us to correspondence. We have three. Uh, uh, notations of three letters that we've received, uh, the first of which uh, is from Peter Vasilion uh, concerning the Clarence rifle team and the dispositions of the firearms. Uh, the second is from a community member and parent, uh, uh, Mr. Kirk, uh, concerning the same matter. And then the third uh, was for a request uh, from Harris Hill PTO uh, for a dedication of a music room at the uh, Harris Hill Elementary School. Director Hicks, do you have anything else to add on those? Uh, no, that's it. Okay. Thank you. Um, with that, we have our first of two public comment sessions. If anybody has anything to add at this point, we'll have a second one later on. I just remind everybody, uh, just if you could state your name and address for the record. Of course. Thank you. Chris Janicki Howe. 8560 Sunset Drive. Um, I'm coming before the board as an advocate for any child that doesn't live in what is quote unquote a traditional home, um, meaning a mother, a father, and a sibling or two. My son came home the weekend before Mother's Day with a present for his mother, which he does not have. He has never had a mother. He has two fathers. And he brings home this, world's best mom, coming from Mom's Gazette. A nine-year-old made up a story about said mother and what her current traits are, what she really likes to do. My husband and I moved to Clarence three years ago because we wanted to move into this district because Clarence is a trendsetter and is known for many accolades across the academic setting. However, they have a giant step that they need to take forward you need to become more inclusive. And I'm not speaking about children that have two moms or two dads. I'm speaking about children that live in a single mother household. I'm speaking of children that are being raised by their grandparents. I'm speaking of children that are in the foster care system that don't have a mother or a father. We need to be more inclusive. 
other school districts, myself working in one as a social worker, other school districts, all their forms that are sent home at the beginning of the school year or throughout the school year say parent and or guardian one, parent and or guardian two. Clarence, mother, father. You can do better. On behalf of those students, please do better because they notice. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Stephanie Decker, 4546 Harris Hill Road. I am here tonight on behalf of the Harris Hill PTO. As you mentioned, we did send a letter as well. Uh, retires, retirees in our district, I know, are several this year. The reason I am here tonight is because of a specific retiree from our building, that's William Lambert. And I think almost everybody in every building also knows Bill Lambert and remembers him for something. I understand that every building has a policy or does something different for the retirees. But Mr. Lambert has made such a mark on all of the students, teachers, the parents, and so many more. A few years ago, we had a 60 year anniversary for One Little Candle. And, I, and if you remember how many alumni we had come back, it was amazing how many people just wanted to be there because Mr. Lambert has continued to bring this, these traditions to our school. He's an extraordinary man. I'm fortunate to have two children, one who has completed his career at Harris Hill and is now at the middle school. And Mr. Lambert is the one who has strongly encouraged his musical ability. He is now in voce, he's in show choir, and he's in chorus at the middle school. And that's because Mr. Lambert showed him the love of music. He is just such an extraordinary man, and we really urge you to consider our request of allowing us to name the music room at Harris Hill dedicated to Mr. William Lambert for his 32 years of service at Harris Hill. I, I believe that this is a request that should be granted because in our building, he is such a man of character and integrity, and I think we need to share that and show our kids that he is a man that gives back. He's very reverent, and I think those are characters, characteristics that we want to share and show our children. So please, please consider this request. It would mean the world to not only me, to the board, but to our entire school, entire um, family of families at Harris Hill. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other public comments at this time? Um, I guess that moves us to unfinished business. And I, I would just like to make a motion for us to discuss uh, the dedication of the music room to Mr. Lambert and um, have a vote. Do we have, uh, we have a vote for an addendum to the agenda? All those in favor? To discuss the, uh, the memorial? Hi. All right, so proceed to discuss. Yeah, you want to begin? I, I just think there's no better person to dedicate a room after. I attended many of the last concerts, and not just like Harris Hill concerts, it was the district concerts. He got standing ovations at whether the high school, the middle school, the chorus, and the round. He's just a man that would do anything for anyone, and I just, I'm just for dedicating that room for, for him. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll add my comments and I guess some maybe perspective. I mean, I haven't been on the, the board a tremendous amount of time. Uh, uh, this is my sixth year. We've had a few requests over time. Um, uh, I think we've probably only granted one um, and it was outside the building at the middle school. Um, and really the, the discussion was how do we uh, distinguish one request from another and, and, and not to say something someone is not deserving I didn't have the pleasure of my students, uh, my daughters, uh, going through to Harris Hill and Mr. Lambert, except for the one year in kindergarten. 
but um, I have no dispute that he's an outstanding uh, teacher. <clears throat> My concern is doing this and then what else, um, what requests come next, and how do we compare this versus other requests? Um, so I'm, I'm a little uh, hesitant uh, to support it in, in that regard, but that's obviously I'm the one opinion. I guess my, my response to that is uh, any single person here or in the district could have written a letter asking for the same thing. And I guess because someone actually took initiative and did it, I, I don't think we should say, well, what are we going to do when the next one happens? I mean, every case is, is different. And I, no one else sent letters. I, I mean, and I, I guess for me, it's a plaque on, next to the music wall just showing some honor. It's not like you know, we're naming the school. We're not naming the school after him. It's one classroom to show you know, show support for him. So, Mike, can I, may I, yeah. I think we need to have a policy on this. If we're going, if we're going to do it, then we need to have a policy that's going to apply equally to all future requests. And I, I don't believe we have that at this yeah. point. I, I guess to build on that comment and for everybody's awareness, we do have a policy of memorials. Um, I went back and reread it yesterday. It's, I'll say, rather vague, yes. uh, which allows us a great deal of latitude. But to that end, it also doesn't really define yes. what the criteria is very well. Um, I read the policy also. It's, a, it's really a non-policy. So I think if we're going to go ahead and do this, I'd rather table it and figure out what the policy is. And I'm not saying we don't name the room after Mr. Lambert. I'd just like to apply that equally so the next time we're in this position, we're just not arbitrarily assigning, um, you know, naming things after people. I said I, I, what I'd like to do is table this to the next meeting so we can discuss, review the policy and see what, so we can apply these criteria equally across the, the board to anyone who applies. So that would be my motion at this point. I guess, I guess for me, tabling it, it they need to do it <laughs> this week. I mean, it's the end of school. And they sent a letter, I mean, they sent a letter like weeks ago. So, and that's what they were told to do. So I guess I have a problem. Like, if that's not what was supposed to happen, nobody told them that it should be different. I, I acknowledge, I think the letter was dated late May. It was unfortunately after our last meeting, so this is the first time we're together uh, to discuss it. Uh, and I understand that the school year is uh, ending rather quickly here. Mike, I do believe we do have other dedications. I, I believe um, Sheridan Hill actually had a dedication for Dr. Codd. Um, and is there, there, is a there, there are other here, dedications so that are existing. I know Mrs. Corey had a dedication in the, at the library as well, I believe. In the library, so and we have made those decisions previously. <clears throat> I mean, do we vote? I mean, is that what happens next? I'm not sure what the well, policy Does anybody else have any other comments? Well, I know the school year is ending, but I don't think it necessarily has to be done. There, if we decide to do it, we could make a, a, a nice dedication ceremony in the fall. Um, I know we have 22 teachers retiring, and I think we should have a policy that that it's nothing against this teacher, but I think we should have a policy that, that is a little clearer than what we have now. So I would not rush into it myself. I agree. Well, I think <clears throat> the agenda was amended for a motion to approve the uh, request for memorial today. Uh, so I guess we'll vote on that. Absent, uh, depending on where that goes, and we can decide on next steps. Really? Uh, so, uh, have uh, before us a motion to approve the uh, naming of the music room at Harris Elementary in honor of uh, Mr. Lambert. Uh, all those in favor, signify by aye. Aye. No? It is uh, four no, two yes. So, we'll table it and bring up um, the memorial discussion at the July meeting. So, we'll review the policy and have that policy available at the, yeah, the I would, next meeting? I would, suggest that we put it on the agenda formally for a discussion at the July meeting at this point. Thank you. Okay. Any other unfinished business? All right. uh, with that, uh, Dr. Hicks, the superintendent's report, uh, safety task force. Thank you, Mr. Fuchs. I'm going to move this way a little bit. Thanks, Dr. Patay. Uh, we have many members of the safety task force here tonight. Mr. Mancuso and I are going to kind of tag team where the safety task force has been and what the recommendations to the school board are. Okay. So, uh, I'm sorry, am I blocking? No, you're fine. Uh, we had a charge from the Board of Education to the safety task force. Essentially, examine everything 
in our current safety plan along with best practices for safety and mental health in order to determine what changes should be considered. Uh, present those recommendations to the Board of Ed. And the Board of Ed allocated and the community approved uh, $370,000 in the 2018-19 budget to enact those recommendations that are deemed to be critical. I don't think there's any expectation on the part of the Safety Committee that the Board will make the decisions tonight. Uh, we're just going to give you the, the work that we've done to have you consider it. Uh, there is money in next year's budget to enact safety concerns. We think it should be a priority, but I don't think the decisions have to be made tonight. Um, these are the members of our task force. We had 80 people apply to be members of the task force. We kept a large committee of very uh, talented people uh, that counted about 32, 33 people by the time we were finished. There were a couple of sitting board members on our task force. Our task force ranged the gamut of expertise, just like you would imagine it would in Clarence. Uh, we had parents, teachers, administrators, but we also had people that were working already as law enforcement officers. Uh, we had a school psychologist, a school social worker from Williamsville, uh, people who worked for the FBI, a health official, uh, a homeland security officer, a pastor, etc. cetera. All right, we also had our SRO, and the BOCES safety risk officer from Erie One BOCES that we work with. So we felt that this was a broad range of expertise that would have really good knowledge of existing safety um, elements and be able to help us work towards some consensus on what we should do to make our schools more safe. So we had uh, three separate meetings and we're just gonna kind of run through real quickly what we did at those particular meetings. Our first meeting was on March 19th. We reviewed the legislation that exists in New York State for safety. Uh, it's called SAVE legislation, and it requires that the district create a safety plan, which we make edits to on an annual basis. We also have individual building plans. Right, the district has um, two actual safety committees district-wide, and we do subscribe to the BOCI service that kind of coordinates with the 101 uh, regional information center districts that Erie One BOCES handles, they take care of uh, making sure that the safety plans meet all the New York State and federal guidelines. So the district does have those things in place, and um, certainly uh, Dr. Hicks will go through a couple of other things that we have in place here, but we certainly see the need for enhanced door security and, and a few other things, even though we do have door security and uh, a lot of things in place. You'll see okay. some of the charts as we go through that we're probably at this point in time, uh, again, while we want to be better, right about middle of the road, district to district. So the other thing we do on an annual basis to the state is report any violent action on the part of students or adults. We also report any um, violations of the Dignity Act towards New York State. These things that are listed up here are all of the safety elements that were in place before the committee started its deliberations. We do have a single point of entry in all of our schools. We do have a buzz-in system. Uh, we have before and after school protocols, although they're not terrific, and this is an area that we definitely need to improve on. We do have ID badges for all of our employees. Those badges will get you in particular doors. Uh, we're working on, outs we have door numbers on the inside, we're working on outside numbers that can be seen by emergency responders. We have the ability to record phone calls. We do have mandatory drills, um, not just for fire drills, there are mandatory uh, lockdown drills at this point as well. We have a school resource officer. In our last project, we put in surveillance cameras and intruder door locks. Although there was discussion in the committee as to whether or not those door locks really worked as well as they could have, okay? So we reviewed all of that stuff and talked with the committee about what we currently do. We also reviewed all of the scenarios that we have in our emergency plan. And basically you can see those bulleted items. Those are things that are mandatory in every safety plan for a school in New York State. And we practice them, we train our staff on them. Uh, we also reviewed the mental health supports that we had across the district. We have seven psychologists across the district, three guidance counselors in the middle school, and five counselors in the high school. 
as far as in comparison to other districts in New York State and other districts in Erie County, we're probably low with regard to uh, mental health supports. We also took a look at any of the safety initiatives that are in the New York State Legislature at this point, none of which were actually passed by the end of the session. And people brought good ideas to the first session on what we should do to improve safety. We created a website, we made it public, we asked the public to get back to us with any of their ideas, and we conducted a safety questionnaire of other school districts. And this is hard to read, but all this stuff is on the Board of Ed website, and it's also on the School Safety Task Force website. You can link directly off of the uh, homepage to do that. But basically, this shows a chart of which school districts are doing what things for safety. And you can kind of see where Clarence is with regard to the things that are out there. Um, this talked about mental health supports. And you can see where Clarence sits in regard to the other school districts that bothered um, answering our questionnaire, okay? So at April 23rd, in our second meeting, the first presentation we had was from the uh, director of the Family Support Center in Sweet Home, which is the oldest family support center in Erie County. She did a really good job of explaining what a family support center is, how it can be used for mental health concerns with kids, and the committee asked a bunch of questions. Uh, we also took the suggestions that we had to date and we divided them into three categories. And you can see this on the website if you're interested. Equipment that had to do with safety, personnel, or planning. We continued discussing things, we continued refining our list. Uh, on May 21st, we went through a series of activities to try to narrow down and reach consensus on those items that we thought were the most prominent to recommend to the Board of Ed. At this point when we started, there were 53 separate ideas on our list. They were categorized in those three ways and we walked through a couple of scenarios to try to get tables of people to agree. So we had four kind of big table groups and this is how it turned out. We asked the groups from the short-term perspective. In other words, what should we do starting next year, starting the next school year? And from a longer-term perspective, what are the things that you think would be the most uh, advantageous safety elements? The first table came up with, from the short-term, additional school resource officers. We only have one. That school resource officer is housed is, is Officer Ballow. He's housed in the high school, although he visits all of the buildings. Uh, both the first table and the second table, their number one thing was additional school resource officers. Uh, secondly, their kind of number two thing, a family support center, which require, requires a director and requires some clerical help and requires uh, some other things that, to get it off the ground. Uh, then things started to deviate a little bit once we got past the first two. First table talked about metal detectors, additional mental health support, psychologists or social workers, and to be restrictive about some of the things we do before and after school insofar as access. The second table talked about a T-PASS system. Currently, a T-PASS system would work with our existing buzz-in system. You would, when you got buzzed in, you would have to take a physical identification, get it scanned by this particular device, it would count it against what, Rick? Well, first of all, it will check you against the um, uh, databases that we check our employees against. So the, the child protection type databases will, will be scanned through that. Um, it will then create a, a true ID badge, uh, an expiring ID badge, so that you can go to where you want to go to only. Um, it will do a lot of things as far as allow us to restrict people and allow us quick entry for those who have been cleared. And we know that every Tuesday and Thursday, the same person comes for the same reason. So we, it, it tries to make it secure, but it also tries to not bottleneck anything. So it'll slow down the process of entry, but at the same time, it'll um, cause it to be more secure. It'll also print a ID badge with the person's actual photograph on it. Uh, in addition, the second table talked about some other things that the first table did not agree on as a priority. Blue alarms are like fire alarms, but they exist in certain portions of the building, and if you pull the blue alarm, 
it does an automatic to 911 for a, pot a potential school intruder. So that was, that was a, those particular things were thought of as an idea. There was a door barricade that would have almost like a piece of angle iron that would barricade the doors from the inside in addition to having them locked. And this was, uh, there were some law enforcement personnel on our, on our task force that thought this was a really good idea. And then before and after school uh, access restrictions. So those were the first two tables. These were the second two tables. Same kinds of things. The T-Pass system came up again. School resource officers came up again. The Family Support Center came up again. Some other ideas, some trauma training for our teachers in first aid and for our nursing staff. Uh, some additional training for substitutes. Blue alarms again as a longer term solution. So these were the kind of solutions that came out once we worked through a series of activities to try to gain consensus. And when we put it all together, these are the things that came out as the highest priority. Now, we do have an accounting of the cost for each one of these things, but right now it's estimates. So when the board makes a decision on settling on what they want, we'll go on out and get the exact costs. But we can give you some ballpark right now. Uh, the short term, consensus priorities of the school safety task force were additional school resource officers, that was the, the highest priority, a family support center, the T-PASS system, and something for restricted access before and after school. Now at the elementary schools, there is restricted access before and after school. The only group that's there after school are the uh, longer care centers. Yeah, the, the Y runs the after school program and, and we, we kind of keep those typically to a single entry to pick up your, your children up until six o'clock. The, the issues occur with community use and community education programs that exist after that. Yeah. Right now, uh, whether there's, there's limited programs at an elementary school, but certainly the middle school and absolutely the high school have a ton of programs every night. And right now, once that time comes, the access is, is not secure, it's not restricted. And certainly, um, if any of you have been to high school and middle school, there's you know, basketball games, there's those kinds of events that right now don't quite have the security uh, with a high degree of comfort. So really what you need in order to have restricted access before and after school, and it's an issue in our middle school and high school, you need people. You need monitors at the doors who are going to check identifications, make sure that people are the right people coming in. We also need to figure out a way to close down portions of the high school and the middle school that are not closed down right now. The longer term recommendations were additional psychologists or social workers, the blue alarms, and additional surveillance cameras. Now, we think we can do all of the short term things within the budget that was allocated by the Board of Education. Additional SROs have, you know, there's some negotiations that has to go on with those particular cost items, but we think we can do it. Also in the short term, we think we can do things that have a low cost or really no cost. Training, incident command system through Dave Bissonette and the uh, Clarence Emergency Response Team, safety, plan, safety training for PTO volunteers and substitutes, additional peer mediation in the middle school and the high school, and mandated, if we're not gonna change our current intruder locks, a mandate that doors be locked at all times, uh, which in some instances happens and in some instances did not, does not happen. So these were the big items. There are a number of different people from the task force here in the, in the audience today. They'd be happy to give you a perspective on anything or answer your questions and we really wanted the task force members to answer questions of the board. So I'm gonna turn it over to the board, ask questions, and please have our task force members answer. Go ahead. Can everybody just maybe raise your hand if you're on the task force? So there's quite a few members of the task force are here. I guess I'll begin. First off, for those in attendance and those not, thank you very much for dedicating the time to this endeavor. I know uh, there was a number of hours just in the meetings, but there's a lot of additional time spent uh, preparing and researching ideas and so forth. So on behalf of the board, I thank you. Um, I guess anybody that would care to, to offer some comments, I'd be curious to know with regards to uh, some of the short-term items 
Um, if there was any more contextual thought around uh, that you wanted to share around, like the SRO and the Family Support Center, as far as priorities within there. So the Family Support Center is a, an individual, but are, you know, was there a focus area to discuss the SRO's priorities around buildings or level of involvement or types of roles that you saw them serving within the buildings themselves? Yes. Um, what I saw This was a bit of a, this was a school that in some ways to me needs a bit of a culture change because of what we're seeing in today's, in, all around in this, in, in this country today with schools. We had a school shooting just after the first meeting. We had one just before the last meeting. <clears throat> so I think the mindset stays in everybody's focus that, and this is just my opinion, everybody else can share if they want to. Clarence has to change their culture when it comes to the openness that has occurred for the access to schools. As far as the SROs are concerned, having worked in law enforcement for a long period of time, I think it's uh, paramount that there's more than one man or one woman to respond to any type of issue that occurs in the school and what didn't occur to me, and I sat with Ms. Brown Brigette right here in front of me, is there's many issues that can occur where the SRO uh, can be crucial to respond to, and that is not just the students, not just the emergencies, but the parents and how they relate to the faculty and where they show up, and what kind of strife they may cause or what kind of issues they may cause when they show up. The other thing that was brought up was that the current SRO and hopefully any future SROs would have a tremendous relationship with the students and have ability to communicate with the students and offer a sense of security. So having said that, I, and just to, to round out, officer safety has always been something that I've seen accomplished at first in numbers, certainly equipment, but more than one person to accomplish what is a huge task. I can't believe that a school district this size has one SRO. But again, I, I'm a little bit biased. I come from that background. So to move on from that, when it comes to the um, Family Support Center, I think what really sold me on that was probably the person that came in and did the presentation. She was phenomenal, to say the least. And uh, again, having sat down again, I, I hate to pick on you again, but Ms. Brown Brigette, there's a, a lack of connection to mental health services for our families and for our students. There's a need for mental health services for prevention and for follow-up care for our families, our students, and our faculty here in Clarence. And that's, I will stick to just that. Um, one of the things that she mentioned that never occurred to me is that for many of the mental health agencies that provide services in this community, they look for numbers for how many people are actually referred to their agencies before they'll actually contact, contract with a district. And what struck me, or what struck a chord with me with the uh, the community or the family resource center is that they were willing to come to see the student where they were at. And we talked many times about where would the family resource center be located and I think the, and again I'm not going to speak for everybody, but the district would probably be the best place to have that family resource center located because the students could have access to it without having to leave school um, and there's a little more confidentiality. I guess that's it for now, but that was the biggest thing for me was just, I mean I moved here for the same reasons we, that people talked about for the school district. I have four children, 10 and under, believe it or not, so, and uh, we're, we're here for the Clarence School District because what you do here is far and above what many school districts offer, but we have to do more. and. Um, Changing the culture is probably the first step. More SROs in a, in a uh, family resource center. And the other issues, I will let other people speak to, but that's where I was at. That's where my passion was. Thank if you. I may, Mike, Thank ask you. a question? Yes, please. Thank you very much. I just have a quick question. You know, this year we set aside about $370,000 to put towards these initiatives. What would be your priority with that money? I mean, we have $370,000 in the budget. And what would you recommend breaking that up into? If I could say my priority and then duck out because I don't want anybody to. <laughs> I, my priority would be probably be SROs because it's a knee-jerk response. When you are turning on the news at night and you're seeing a school shooting, the first thing you see 
the first thing you think of is what could we have done differently? And I know there's a big debate out there on whether or not SROs would have made a difference in some of the schools, but taking a step to do something is better than standing by and not doing anything. And I, I guess the first... <laughs> so if you said to me what the priority was, it's S it, for me it's SROs, but I've, I've been in law enforcement for most of my professional career. I've also worked in the mental health... Um, uh, I've worked in mental health treatment, addictions treatment, case management, prosecution, parole. I've worked in all, in all of those areas. But part of the SRO is also going to be an individual who's trained and seasoned and ready to deal with a person, hopefully, that's struggling with a mental health issue, or at least to be able to assist that person that is helping that person. So in some ways, it would go hand in hand. Thank you. If I could ask you just a quick question as far as the task force goes, are you, are you looking for an SRO at every single building? Was yeah. that just, yes, yeah. okay, okay. Yes. Yep. And I would say that we, we spend a lot of time on the, the two things that are most important here, the immediate response to a crisis situation and the beefing up of the mental health services provided to students and families. And we found that those two were really the highest priority. And SROs and the Family Support Center take us a long way down the field of meeting those two goals. All of the rest of the things are important and they should come later, but if we could get an SRO in every building and a family support center, we think we would have gone a long distance towards having an ability to respond to situations, to having someone in the building who is law enforcement who the children know and can respond to, and then also having resources available for our families who are dealing with someone in the family with a mental health crisis, <coughs> and hopefully addressing and being able to step into those situations before they reach the crisis point. Other comments from the task force members? Um, saying that we ha what we have in the budget, you were saying you think we can do all the short-term things, so you're saying right. that we could get SROs in every building and a family resource center? If, well, we could, if we have the SRO model that works like we have right now, we could. Um, do we know, have people in mind? No. <laughs> so, the, you know, that's, that's the issue is, um, you know, uh, Mike, obviously, you know, um, being a retired law enforcement officer, that SRO model works well and if we could maintain that type of level of cost um, for let's say you know six SROs we certainly could include that in there um, a traditional SRO that is an active duty sheriff um, would be a hundred and thirty thousand dollars for one person per year so that model wouldn't work but us researching and getting some options along those lines um, of, of the lower priced one, that's where uh, uh, Dr. Hicks and I put a cost to everything and we could do all those short term ones. Also, uh, I have another comment. We have discussed endlessly um, for the really not too many hours when we put in, we, we could have spent a lot more time than we have, um, but we were very limited with the time being what it was. Uh, but basically what it comes down to is it, the SROs and the immediate response as well as the mental health and the long-term growth with the Family Health Center or Family Support Center is it's it's something that's gonna have to be it's not just a one-time budget this is something that's gonna have to be addressed from here on out it's something that's that's the future um, and it's not just family support it's also SROs it's the elephant in the room that nobody's really had to address or felt like addressing until um, Parkland so, 
I would just say also that um, I don't think that the SROs should be necessarily considered a luxury. I, I think that the district would be exposed to, to massive liability without them. We're seeing that some of the schools that have unfortunately been on the receiving end of these uh, violent acts, um, they're in some serious litigation problem. The district is. It's, it's becoming now a basic expectation to have an SRO. It's really not anything up for debate as if it's a, an add-on or a luxury. It's from a legal standpoint or a business standpoint, the district would be opened up to massive liability without one. I've worked at the district since January of 2016, 30 years in federal law enforcement. You have points at this building that you have no one there, including an SRO, because his shift is eight to four or whatever. You have monitors, and that's what I am. You have every door open, almost every door, I think. Right, we have the back door, the two back doors in front are open at 6.30. Yes. And there's no one here, just students walking around. And at 315, monitors get sent home, 330 get sent home. There's fifteen hundred kids leaving the building and there's no monitors around to watch. Now Mr. Ballard could be at the middle school. So there's no one to keep track of these students. And it's not a lot of money to add an hour or two to a monitor schedule as a short term until you figure out where you can get the money, the grants, the drafting, more SRO. I do also think that one of the points that came up with the Family Resource Center is it would help the teachers be able to go back to teaching and not have to deal with these issues every single day and take away from students and not be able to teach their classes, quite honestly. Yep. Any other questions or comments from the board? What are our next steps, Jeff? Our next steps are for you as the Board of Ed to consider everything you've heard here today. We can give you all the backup information on things that the committee, that the task force looked at as well. Uh, I'm gonna suggest that you take July and August to figure out exactly what you would, uh, what you think are the, of the priorities, then task Rick and I Rick, with getting it done. Um, just so that the community knows, we have a special partnership with the town of Clarence that allows us to have Officer Ballow as an SRO, and it's much cheaper, no offense, Officer Ballow, <laughs> than trying to get an existing sheriff or uh, trooper to be in the schools. Which but, is why I said to go out within the town. Right. So we, we have had some preliminary conversations with Mr. Casilio. I don't want to put him on the spot but he is open to continuing discussions. And there is a possibility that we could get an SRO in every building and do it in a way that is not only cost effective but allows us to do more things in the short term. So we would pursue that. Mm -hmm. uh, if you know right away as a board what you would like as the recommendations, we'll pursue it, but you can take some time. That's what our recommendation would be to kind of digest this and give us direction. We'll have this on the agenda at every meeting. Right. Okay. Jeff, if we wait to August to actually come back, what would be the time frame to actually roll this out? We wouldn't be ready for the... To have SROs year. to have some of this other stuff done. Any of the stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. We can probably do some of the stuff more quickly. A family support center requires a director. Right. It's um, like Mr. Wells said, you have to have the right person on the right seat right. on the bus. Uh, we would advertise for that and then we would go on out and find the person. A family support director could be a counselor, could be a social worker, could be a psychologist, could be a teacher. So we would make a decision, 
post, get it, take us about a month and a half. Right. The T-Pass system is something we could have in place for opening day. Uh, the SROs would take us a little bit longer, but we could have them here probably by uh, late October. And they might okay. just be pieced in. Yeah. Right. You know, right. one might come at another. I, I guess my, oh, my I'm, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> my recommendation would be, <clears throat> especially with the short-term items, obviously, um, you know, it's a high-level presentation. We've got some of the numbers, but uh, I would, I personally would like in July to be able to understand a little bit more uh, behind each of these of what's involved, the lead times, and, okay. and you know, um, of the funding estimates. You know, is it ninety percent accurate, or are we we dealing with the wide range like the SROs? And sure. what are those dialogues we need to have with the town or others to keep things moving? Okay, we'll get you the full cost out for the July 9th meeting. I would love to have a yep. goal to have some of these things started and in place for start of the school year. Absolutely. For the start of the school year, especially the Family Resource Center. I think that once we all discuss it and we look at the actual benefits and if you can look at the um, sweet home model yep. and the fact that almost every school in Western New York has one for Clarence, it's probably time that we address that. I know 10 years ago we addressed okay. it and then it got pushed aside, so it, it's really critical that we move forward on that and have it available sooner rather than later. Mr. Brophy? I agree with Mr. Brophy 100 percent. Thank you. Any other comments? Mike? Does anybody else have anything about that? Okay. Uh, the only thing I would like to add regarding the visitor management system is I see it on conscience constantly every day of the people that come in this building that are being led in by other people. And Mrs. Major is in no spot where she is to be able to monitor that well. Especially with the brick pillars that are out there, it's a constant, ongoing issue of people entering this building. That, like I said, people are holding doors for them because they don't like to be rude. Obviously, the majority of these are innocent, but there were two times this year where two former students came into this building, nobody knew where they were, and we had another gentleman in this building that was wandering around and he was trying to find a job. And it's just, it's just an odd. I don't know if she has to be repositioned. Somebody else has to do that job. But
to the office. Um, and then we were like, we said, we like, we said, man, we're trying to do this system. And like I said, um, we get stuff picked out. Our computer has to stay on it, like I said. Um, but there are kids in the school with us at that point. So we were also, we had two shots too, having somebody from a security person sitting in that vestibule area. Um, that wasn't on anybody's. Right. Architecturally, we have those vestibules at the middle school, Sheridan Hill, Harris Hill, and uh, Ledgeview, but we don't have them at the high school in Clarence Center. Mr. Wells? Sure. Thanks. Talking about doors open and locks so that teachers can push the doors closed or someone can push the door. Yes. Yeah. Push the door closed. Yeah. Running by, it's a, it's a, can we go lock the door? No, ideally. Other comment or um, so I'm not on the task force, but I work in a neighboring district and it is a building a district policy, but really enforced in our building that our doors are locked at all times. Yep. And so my door can be open, but it, it has to be locked um, from the moment I'm there. And then we do have magnetic, magnetic strips that we have over the little lock section. So that I can window. keep my door closed and kids can come in and out, but in an emergency, I can just pull that. the board are we going to continue with that so the district's dis district has two required committees the health and safety committee which dabbles in this but a district-wide safety committee was really the oversight committee and that committee while they meet quarterly can meet more often and this could be incorporated into that so we can have some other committee members absolutely great 
Council Committee members call Rick Mancuso. <laughs> Thanks, Don. We're going to pause slightly to let the task force members, unless you want to stay for the rest of the board meeting, we're going to pause slightly. Anybody that needs to exit, please do so. Then we're going to start the rest of the meeting. Thank you again for your work. Uh, as uh, Mrs. Overhold is getting ready for a presentation, um, I think, um, you know, given the number of people in attendance, uh, if anybody has any additional public comments that they'd like to make at this time, we can entertain those. Thank you. Yes, you see, you see a bunch of people here today in tie-dye, and there's many of us who aren't wearing the tie-dye who are here from past Clarence Center Elementary camping trips. And we just became aware I think the furthest member back is, what year were you, maybe 2000? Yeah, about 2000, 2002 on the camping trip. Um, we're here in support to just say that it has been always that you don't bring extra food to camp and that the teachers and the staff that runs this camping trip goes so far above and beyond to make it the most memorable, wonderful experience and treats every chaperone child parent there with the utmost respect care as they do for our children as well and we just wanted to go on record from all the many many years that are here and this is a small sampling of who could have been here but we just wanted to make sure that you were well aware of how important this trip is to past and to those of us who still have children who will hopefully go on it in the future Hi, Jenna Di Pasquale, 8582 Lakemont Drive. I have just, I think, two things that I wanted to bring up. Um, one, last July, um, my July 1st, my daughter volunteered. She's a senior, so I'm still here because I care about the kids that are going to be existing. But um, we were blindsided by a change in community service that appeared July 1st. Okay. Also, uh, CSAF, which is I'm an active member of that organization, was upset that there were changes made to the community service that we didn't know about as providers of that community service. Um, I guess my question is um, the follow-up from that. I'd like to note I'm hoping there are going to be no changes July 1st that will blindside kids and parents who have already planned to do community service this summer. That would be my hope. So um, that's my first comment. Um, the second, I, sorry, two more comments. The second comment I have is I was on a trip in April for spring break with a family, and this is just a follow-up to the presentation. And one of the parents said to me, when my son gets in trouble, he's had trouble with anxiety and he acts out in school, the school calls, but I always ask, what can I do? Where can I go to get help? And the answer is never where he can go or what he can do. It's that he's suspended. So I encourage you, because I'm a teacher and I've seen the Family Support Center uh, work for kids. That should be number one. If we can prevent the incidences from happening, we don't need SROs. I mean, we do, we do, we have SROs, but I'm just saying, we won't need them if we can prevent the incidences from happening. The third thing I'll say that wasn't on the list, and I'm shocked because I've been talking to parents and kids about this because I'm in a high school, is train kids in how to report what they see on social media. They're our key. They see the Snapchats. They see all the stuff. And if we could tell or give the kids information on how to report it, when to report it, and who to report it to immediately, that's the key, because they see stuff. My daughter witnessed an incident on social media that you know, changed somebody's life. And if she would have known to report it earlier, it would have you know, had an impact. So training kids and who they can contact, you know, as, having a select number of kids with SRO's numbers, I don't know how you do it, but training kids is the key to reporting what they see on social media, because they just think it's every day every day that they see these things. So those are just my three comments. Thank you. Thank you. Jen, Jen, I just want to make one comment that in the short term low to no cost section, we were hoping to have peer mediation at each building and roll that out as well. But certainly so add that social media component. Let me just respond and say there are some potential changes to community service, but the kids will know prior to July 1st, okay? Nothing that should be restrictive in terms of plans that somebody's already made, okay? All right, so let, we're gonna pause again for, and if anyone um, needs to exit, if you wanna stick around for Kristen's presentation, it's awesome, <laughs> but 
We'll pause one more time in case anyone needs to exit and then we'll get on. Thank you, Dr. Hicks. In the 2017-18 school year, we reinstituted 43 department chairs across grades K through 12. In the fall, we met with chairs to establish the district focus areas from which the work would be centered and disseminated, disseminated to all teachers. In the first area, it is our goal to have a guaranteed and viable curriculum in all subject areas, which includes alignment to standards, benchmark assessments, and ample opportunity for students to critically think. Instructionally, we believe it is critical that teachers know and utilize, utilize student-centered, evidence-based instructional strategies that meet the needs of all learners. Strong foundations in literacy, integration of technology to demonstrate understanding, and rigorous performance tasks to measure students' learning are all priorities within this area. Collaboration is key. Through the pro professional learning community structure and facilitation by our department chairs, we are better, better able to share best practices, examine student data, and build a common vocabulary for teaching and learning to create a plan for continuous improvement. The department chairperson provides an opportunity for leadership consistent with our district's mission and vision. The leadership role also allows for targeted and specific feedback on teacher practice, teachers expert in their areas to provide facilitation to their colleagues, as well as to provide support to new teachers and mentors in our newly restructured mentor program. The following roles and responsibilities were established in accordance with the corresponding focus areas. Department chairs act in a lead role of developing and implementing a district-wide philosophy of education, which is that all students will learn at high levels. In addition to the development and examination of our curriculum units, department chairs have also examined student work products and common assessment data to evaluate effectiveness of program. In the area of instruction, they were tasked as the resource person to acquaint teachers with new ideas and research-based instructional practices, as well as act as the point person for ordering and requisitioning materials. The, the department chairs work with the administration in setting direction for the department and the building. They provide feedback on district and building initiatives and assisted with the administrative functions when needed. The professional learning community exists at the department grade level, at the building and district level. Department grade level teams meet once monthly. Department chairs then alternate monthly meetings with the building and district administration. The department chairs have played a critical role in many accomplishments this year. The communication of district-wide curriculum updates, the selection of a new Math and Visions 2.0 program for implementation next school year, and the support and feedback provided to curriculum writing teams, including the recommendation for work to be accomplished this summer. Chairs assisted greatly in the, the determination of the technology deployment in each of the six buildings through the Smart Schools funding, and they also provided a great deal of insight for professional development offerings to be held throughout the school year during our superintendent's conference days. The chairs also provided feedback for scoring plans and procedures and disseminated new information regarding the Regents' examinations to department teams. They also provided feedback on the 2018-19 calendar, as well as new time variables for the 180 day that will be instituted next school year. Lastly, department chairs served as regular facilitators of student data through their meeting time to drive instruction. Also, they assisted in communicating out the school climate survey plans and procedures. Chairs collaborated to make revisions to the elementary report card for next school year, and all chairs also <coughs> provided timely feedback on our new mentor program that will be implemented in the 2018-19 school year. The department chairs are a vital component in the district's professional development and strategic planning goals. The chair's leadership th this year has provided an essential link to the continued growth and success in all of our classrooms. 
<laughs> Need a new clicker. Thank you. And that concludes tonight's presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? <clears throat> Just a general one. Um, sure. Obviously, we were without for a number of years, <clears throat> and it took a while to uh, lay the foundation to get this up and, um, and running. So now we're a year into it. I guess what's next? I mean, is there kind of a, a big priority for next year, an enhancement to what they're involved with? I mean, certainly looking specifically at new program, I mean, we, we will continue um, a major push with the writing of curriculum units, and that, that is in all grade levels. Looking ahead to the summer, we're having probably about 150 teachers come in to work over the, the summer to write those units to be taught next school year. And obviously, the implementation of a new math program will be another um, large area for focus as well. Questions? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. I think that brings us to the financial report. Great. So, uh, first item the financial reports for April. I uh, did want to touch base on the um, presentation there from John Chavone, our CPA firm. It's the pre audit presentation. Nothing really new with this year's audit, uh, but he did go through it in some detail. Uh, we also did receive a donation, which I'd like you to accept, for some equipment to Clarence Center Elementary School for recess. American Heart Association was um, working with some local vendors to, to donate those um, pieces of equipment. And last but not least on this list is the Transportation Department. One of the reasons that we do like that we run our own facility is our employees do a great job and they achieved a 96.2% initial passing rate on every uh, DOT inspection. So that's certainly something to be applauded. Should I just continue through these items? If there's any questions, stop me. Certainly. Um, the next item, we've had a certiorari reserve every year for quite a while. It sunsets every four years. So you set aside money for claims, and then if the claims come to fruition, you pay from that fund. And if not, after four years, the funds revert just to the unallocated monies that the district has. So four years ago, we established a fund for a little over $426,000. A lot of the settlements that came in were just prospective and didn't require refunds. So there is still 299,000 in there. Some of those are still ongoing cases. And when we add those two cases that have come in that are still active from 2014, we have $516,298.91, which we'd like to request that we reestablish the reserve for those payments. And again, the reserve, if established now, would sunset in four years. Rick, are these, uh, are these cases open that we have to potentially pay out for if, certain reasons? or If, if every um, company or some are large residents, but if everyone who has got a case won, getting what they requested is a reduction, we would owe that okay. amount of money. Okay. So, you know, we, we hope we don't pay out all of that, but having the money in reserve is, uh, tends to be a, a good philosophy. Uh, the next item we have, really three resolutions that are pretty standard that we have every year. One is a cooperative bidding resolution that allows us to not only tap into New York State contracts, but the various BOCES and other alliances that New York State allows us to, to, to do as far as using their bids, which is usually a much larger buying power than just our school district. The second one is to pay the bills and to Produce, uh, and the third one is to produce the budget transfers that go along with all of those to um, close all of our books. And typically, um, you know, these are just things that are kind of an accounting mechanism that takes place while the audit is underway. The next item is a borrowing resolution. Uh, we're just requesting a resolution to um, borrow the funds needed to purchase the buses that were approved at the May vote. So we had 10 vehicles approved at the May vote, and uh, that's for $935,000, including the financing costs. This is a five-year bond anticipation note that will continue our program. 
The next item is bids. Um, I did bring the school lunch bid with me, if anybody wants to look at it. Um, it, is a, it is a monster bid, that's at least we only have to do it every five years. Um, Sodexo did win that bid again. They were the lowest responsible bidder. Um, pers the um, wellness committee did a, a good job working on this. Uh, they meet much more often during the year where we have to put the bid out. Um, as you can see, the bid results are there. And I attached some of the financial pages for mostly Mr. Fuchs, who wants to look at those. But the, uh, the bid is about 15 cents higher than the current price, which we anticipated. Uh, you know, the current price was based on a bid of five years ago. And we, we have a lot of things that we're doing now, like uncrustables for peanut butter and jelly, <laughs> so as to um, take care of things, uh, students with allergies. Also, um, smoothies, uh, we're able to make a smoothie that now meets the breakfast and lunch requirements for all the healthy items. So we think that in the coming years should be a, a good seller. Uh, we've got our security bid. We have a security firm for many, many years, different firm periodically if they win the bid, but they really roam from basically 11.30 or midnight until about six. Uh, a rotating random type schedule so they hit all of our buildings. Uh, in addition to doing that, at the elementary schools where we don't have 24-7 access, um, they hit the boilers and they hit the freezers so that they do a check-in station so they know that if a boiler is dying in the middle of the night or a freezer, we, we're alerted. Um, I did put a note in there that we might have some musical instrument bid, but we won't have any for this evening. And I also put in our pre-purchase list. Pre-purchase list is a little higher than normal, but mainly due to retirement incentive. We, that item that's in there is just an estimate as of right now what the non-health coverage payout might be. Uh, next item is simply accepting the vote results from the May vote. Uh, as you remember, both the budget and the buses pass approximately two to one margins, and uh, Mr. Fuchs and Mr. Priori were reelected. The next and last item of this section is um, you need to set the actual date of the reorganization meeting, and this year we're recommending Monday, July 9th to set that date. And then also what we do is we like to attach the draft agenda of that meeting so that you could take a look at it um, and, and see if there's any questions that you have. Uh, when I went through this, I, I didn't really notice anything that was different or new. Um, we do have deputies for the treasurer, for the clerk, and for the claims auditor. And that's a recommendation from our internal audit people so that we would be 100% uh, legal anytime somebody might be on a two-week vacation. Any questions on the financials? Okay. Full agenda tonight. <clears throat> I, I have a question. Yes. If we take the reserve money and allocate it, then we can't possibly use any of that for some of these safety issues if we need it? The reserve is, uh, is from al unallocated funds. The safety items that we have have to have been in the approved budget. budget. <coughs> so, and, and that's where they are. No other questions? Could I have a motion for items F1 to F7? So moved. Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's carried. Uh, Dr. Patak, instructional. Thank you, Mr. Fuchs. You have a number of items before you this evening, beginning with resignations, informational items. We have a good number of appointments. We're well on our way to uh, completing our staffing for the upcoming school year. Uh, as you know, we had the, uh, the numerous retirements uh, based on those retirements as well as uh, regular substitute positions and annual appointments we had 40 positions that needed to be filled or that will need to be filled and uh, including this evening's agenda will we'll be well on our way we have 27 of the 40 positions filled uh, so the majority of these are probationary appointments they're regular substitute as well as annual appointments under this section we'll also have uh, related services for the summer program test scoring training, teachers on special assignment for summer work, regents review instructors at the high school and the middle school, uh, summer work, uh, 
and this is uh, on an as-needed basis for new student screening, uh, summer home instruction for special needs students, summer orientation for incoming freshmen. Uh, we have department and grade level chairpersons that are district-wide in Ledgeview this evening. We'll have the remainder to you hopefully at the July board meeting. Extracurricular, you have the, the uh, fall sports recommendations for review. You will have them for uh, approval at the <coughs> July board meeting. Presentation compensation, summer curriculum projects, special education services. Again, this is on an as-needed basis uh, if uh, students uh, need to come before the CSE. Summer guidance, summer school appointments, and additions and a deletion to the substitute teacher list. Any questions on items P1 to P9? If none, could I get a motion to approve? I just want one question. Yes. Um, Dr. Patek, I see that the um, business summer school isn't on here for the academy internship review. Okay. The uh, business department summer program isn't on here for the academy of business and finance internship review. So that'll be on next month? It should be on for July, yes. Okay. Does that start July 1? So does that mean they can't start till July 15th? We have not received a recommendation for appointment uh, from the high school at this point. Okay, thank you. A motion for P1 to P9? Motion. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Instructional, please. We have a request to amend a previous board action which changes an individual's uh, resignation date. We have resignations. Uh, three of which are for purposes of retirement, uh, which add up to 80 years of service, a request for leave of absence, various appointments. Many of these appointments are temporary personal teacher aides, and those are annual appointments, so they come before you each year. We also have clerical uh, in this mix, as well as a bus driver. And then we have many uh, employees who are 10-month employees who need to work as uh, provide additional services over the summer, so we appoint those in it also. We have summer labors in buildings and grounds, summer labors in the technology department. We also have, uh, at this point, we are not aware of the exact number of bus attendants or bus drivers we will need for uh, summer runs, so we appoint a majority of people, and all these people may not be needed. However, uh, if they are, they'll already be appointed. And they don't get paid unless they work. They work. <laughs> Any questions on the non-instructional items? If not, could I have a motion for P10 to P13? Motion. A second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Carried. All right. Special needs and student activities? Uh, for special education, there were 132 Committee on Special Ed meetings in this past month. 45 preschool, they're all about annual reviews, and that's about it. <laughs> the annual push to the finish line. Uh, I need a motion to approve uh, SE1 and SE2. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Carried. All right, board development. We have the 6,000s up. We've given it a couple of months. Uh, we'd request a vote by the board on the changes to the 6,000s. There's one transportation policy that we neglected. Rick, can you review that? Yeah, the, when we put the 5,000s in, you know, we were comparing our policies to the um, BOCES uh, re, uh, approved policies and things like that. And we accidentally omitted from your approval the paragraph in blue, which outlines what we do basically for our elementary um, alternate drop-offs. So um, anybody <coughs> who might want to go to an after-school daycare facility, we have forever basically said it has to be within your elementary drop-off zone. Mm -hmm. So if you attend Harris Hill Elementary School, you can't go um, after school to a facility on Tonawanda Creek Road. We, we couldn't transport that way. We never have. Um, but by uh, omitting this from the policy, it would have been silent. It's been in the policy in the past, and we just forgot it. Okay. 
just, so be, it's just informational tonight? Uh, yes, you know, typically uh, we want to stand by the, the board's uh, normal procedures and say, um, also, we're really not going to drop anybody off between now and the next board meeting. So, we would uh, just recommend that you look at it as a first read. Yeah. Set it on the agenda for July. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you. And then we need to approval on the six thousand section. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Carried. Okay. And then we have a field trip. Um, Academy of Business and Finance Leadership Group to Chicago. Uh, with all of the details in the packet. Does anybody have any questions on the uh, the trip for the academy? If not, I need a motion to approve item B3. Motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Carried. Um, we have the Committee of the Whole. Uh, we have in our packet a schedule of upcoming meetings. Uh, we had just uh, completed recognizing uh, retired teachers and uh, tenure appointments prior to the meeting. Uh, as I was informed, a collective uh, in excess of a thousand years of service to the district uh, represented this evening. Um, as we just talked about, July 9th will be our reorganization meeting for the coming school year. And uh, the ever so important uh, promotions uh, June 8th, 18th, we have Harris Hill and Sheridan Hill. Uh, June 19th, Clarence Center and Ledgeview, and the high school commencement will be on June 23rd. Uh, with that, um, we did pull the public comment session up earlier, but if anybody has anything else, I'd be open. Is there a quick one? Uh, Joe, excuse me, Joe Lake Lakemont Drive. Um, just real quick on the safety and security proposals that we saw. I know we're kind of limited by this budget, which is, I got so many analogies for that one, but I'll just save those. Um, I hope we learn a little lesson or at least put in in next year's budget for the things that we can't do this year. Um, so sustaining the things that you can do this year and then the things you couldn't do, put it in the budget for next year so we're not limited. Kind of painting yourself in a corner by saying 370 and without recommendations first. So um, hopefully we can look at that next year and say, all right, here's the things we did to sustain those. We got to put those in the budget. And then on top of that, we need all these other things. And that needs to go in the budget as well. Thank you. Thank you. Paul Carey, Thompson Road. Um, I just want to talk about the, the, the uh, outdoor education program at Clarence Center. Uh, and just in general, um, I'm speaking as a parent, but also a, a staff member at a camp um, that has been servicing, uh, actually, uh, Camp Young, which Dr. Codd was immensely involved with. Um, just the sense of community that students learn and the confidence being able to go up to a campfire at the end of the evening and get up in front of their peers, all those experiences, you can't really get in a classroom setting. Um, and, and you really can't even get in an outdoor ed experience that only lasts eight hours. You know, so I mean, I don't, I, some of our schools go out and they do a great experience uh, just for the day. Clarence Center has always done a you know, multi-day trip and it it's really takes it to the next notch of, of what those kids can, can get out of that experience. Uh, so I just have to applaud what uh, Clarence Center is, has been able to do for so many years and the dedication that their staff has. Thank you. Thank you. Shabbat and Como Utley Road. Um, I had two things. Um, completely opposite of each other. Um, just for the task force committee, I just wanted to chime in um, on some of our discussions about SROs that um, I thought, but we kind of talked about prioritizing if we could only get one for next year, like going to the middle school, because there's obviously a high need there. Um, but with the Family Support Center, um, we discussed, at least at my table, great length about how we do have a lack of some services in the district, and we do have psychologists, which are great. And they can do the testing, they can do everything, but you know, this time of year they're just doing testing. So we're, we, we become very lacking in buildings um, for kids who are in crisis or, or needs come up throughout the year. So in my view, at all the meetings, we were very much tied between getting the mental family support services and the SROs. Um, I know it did come up, SROs at every building. I, I just have to say, I mean, not everyone spoke up, but there were certain people on the committee who were, were kind of more against it elementary. That didn't come up, but um, I was not, but I mean, I'm just saying that um, 
we felt that if it comes down to next year getting something that we really felt strongly that the middle school needed one um, just for the amount of things that go on in the schools but with the mental health thing we talked about you know keeping people out of a building is one thing but a lot of the school shootings are kids walking into the school with a, with a gun in their backpack so who is really going to stop that obviously it would be the, the school resource officer so anyways that's just my two cents for next year um, before we chime in and try to throw resource officers over family support there was a lot of people who supported the mental health aspect and my second thing was just based on your presentation about a new math program I was just curious how that came about and what the program is <laughs> It's actually been about five years in the making. So okay. we had started piloting programs back in 2012-13. Um, so the, really the, it's been the work of the department chairs this year, bringing them together, collaborating around the, the two programs that were primarily being piloted and coming to consensus that Envisions 2.0 would be the program we would be implementing <laughs> starting next year. Was that what Ledgeview had, do you know? Or Correct. Okay. Because yes. I know that we had asked at one point, I talked to um, Keith about parent feedback. Um, yes. We had a huge issue, and the, the teachers always agree that there's not enough room for students to show work. Yeah. So we've had a great deal of difficulty with having to, like, transpose and, and just really, like, having a great deal of difficulty with that. We've so provided that ever... feedback to Pearson as well. Okay. Yes. So we, we did get that feedback from teachers, and, and we did provide that information to Pearson okay. in terms of the space on the page not being ample it was pretty bad yeah and there will be parent communication coming out in early fall um, regarding the new math programming and, and the support um, that you will also be provided at home okay. via um, web-based support etc okay. okay thank you thank you right. if uh, we have no other comments I need a motion to adjourn to executive session for the purpose of discussions leading to the employment of a particular person. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you, everyone.